This is just a really quick update on where I've got to with this um, this bomb machine, Turing Welchman bomb. Um, the last film, I think I had the um, motor controllers all working, um, all controlled from the, the Arduino down here. And I was playing around with getting my C code, which was running on my laptop, running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've done that. That was fairly simple because I'd kept the code very straightforward. So it's 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 very simple C++ code actually. Um, and I was able to port that and get that to run on the Raspberry Pi, which I've got sitting over here. So this is a Raspberry Pi 2. And interestingly, running the code on my laptop, um, which is a, a fairly powerful ThinkPad, fairly new computer, took around 11 seconds. Running it on the Raspberry Pi only took 22 seconds, so only twice as long, um, which is fairly impressive. I guess you could get that time down a lot, I think, if you started looking at things like, like multi-threading, but um, I don't need to go into those complications because I actually need it to run slower because it's, it's bound by the speed of the, the mechanical mechanisms. So the, um, the code's all sort of there. Now it's going to be a bit hard to see anything, but uh, the way this works at the moment is I have the, the Pi over here, and that's basically controlling the Arduino here. So at the moment it's just telling it either to step or to stop. Um, there's a few more things I, I think I'll need to do to actually make it fully complete. At the moment you have to manually reset the Arduino so that everything's in sync. So if we you set up the wheels so it's starting at the the ZZZ position and then you reset this and then if we actually run the code so I'm running the, the Raspberry Pi 2 headless so I'm just connecting to it through via a um, SSH session and I've made the screen a lot bigger the, the window a lot bigger so hopefully we can see what's happening uh, at the moment, you tell it the name of the menu file you want to run, which I spelt wrong, so i just do that again. It's a bit hard typing with one hand. And so it just displays the configuration up on the screen. So you can sort of see the, the test register, the input voltage, how many scramblers are involved in this menu and how they're, how they're wired up basically, which is what all this is. Um, this is running the same menu that they run at Bletchley Park to demonstrate the real bomb there. And so if we start this up, it'll start running through the iterations and the, the drum should start turning. So we start that running. And you can see it's basically going through the, the different iterations and the drums are moving in sync. Now, um, on the scope here, you can see this is the control signal coming from the Raspberry Pi, which is telling this to step. Now, one interesting thing I had to do was actually fiddle with the speed of the stepper motors so that the speed of the motor is kind of in sync with the, the steps that it's doing. Um, and that's because I send the pulse to tell it to step, and you want it to, you want the step to basically take almost the same amount of time as the pause between the pulses, if that makes sense. So if you don't do that, what will happen is you send a pulse and the motor will move, and it'll move quickly. So it'll just jerk into position. Now if you slow the motor down so that the time of the step is pretty much almost the same as the time between the steps, it smooths out the motion, so it, it rotates a lot more smoothly like that. And so this is basically running through. The first stop is coming up at, um, very shortly, DKX. Um, I can see why they use this menu at Bletchley Park, because they only have to run the machine for a few minutes before it stops, so it's quite good to demonstrate. And so you can see here that it's come up with the, the DKX stop, this represents the test register, so it's showing us that Q is the letter. And if we look at the drums, it's very hard to see, but that has actually stopped on the right letters. So 
uh, DKX. The other thing I've done is I'm using the the wiring pi library um, to actually do the, the I.O. control the I.O. pins on the, the Raspberry Pi and that has a LCD library built in. So what I've done is I've actually hooked up this little LCD screen and that's very hard to see but it is actually showing the the test register and the letter and it's showing here that Q is the letter that it stopped on. Um, this is a 4x20 display. I've actually got a, a, a 40 character by two line display coming which I'll use to display the test register as one row. Um, at the moment it's it's basically just wrapping around. It's pretending it's a a longer display but because it isn't it just wraps the, the characters around. Um, so that stopped. If we start it up again it would run again now for a few more minutes till it hits the other, the next stop. Um, and that's pretty much it. So the next thing to do is I still need to figure out what I'm going to do about the resetting. Um, now the bomb does have various buttons and switches and things on it so uh, when you start a run there's two switches on the front and I could just make it that when you press one of those switches that's the manual reset of the, um, the Arduino but I think it'll be nicer to to have it resetting from the Raspberry Pi so I'll probably do that. Um, the other thing I need to do obviously is put it all on a decent circuit board rather than being on breadboard spread across my desk. Uh, at the moment one thing that you have to be careful of when you're interfacing a Pi to an Arduino is that the, the Raspberry Pi is 3.3 volts. The Arduino uses 5 volts. Now if you're just uh, reading inputs on the Arduino you can actually just use the the direct output from the Raspberry Pi into an input on the Arduino without having to do any level shifting because the 3.3 volts is enough to register as a high, a logic high. Um, I think I'm actually going to put some buffering between the two just, just for safety's sake. Uh, that's also actually something you have to look at when you're, you're interfacing these little LCD modules to the Raspberry Pi. Um, you need to make sure that this never writes because if it writes back to the processor you, you could fry the hardware. So you can prevent it from ever doing that by actually physically tying, tying the read white write line to ground and then this will only ever work in input mode which is, which is a very safe thing to do. And the other thing I'll need to start doing is making a housing. So I've got the, the tins for my drums. I found a, a suitable main switch for the side even though it won't really be running mains, but that's um, similar to the switches they use on the real bomb. And I've got my longer, longer display coming. Uh, the other thing I want to do is figure out a more clever way of doing the, the input output. So um, I'll probably just dedicate this machine just for being the bomb. So I don't know if I can have another SD card that you can store the menu files on or, or how exactly I'm going to do that so that's something else I need to look at but at the moment it's running this one really well and I'll just keep going with that